Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. It's uh, Wednesday morning here, kind of neutral weather, so we'll see what happens. And uh, today I thought I would talk about making videos of programming and some benefits that I see myself getting out of that. And uh, the reason I bring this up is because yesterday I got a very nice comment from Tim Morgan, who is um, building a Ruby to C compiler. And he said that he started making videos of the process. And I went and I checked out his channel and I'll link it in the description below so you can check it out too, because I, I do think it's, it's very good. Um, and sure enough, he is building a programming language, much in the same way that I'm building an operating system. And uh, I really, really like the format that he's doing. Um, and obviously, um, I like the format that I'm doing. That's why I'm doing it. And I started making these videos in this style because that's exactly the type of videos I would want to watch. So I'm really excited that um, someone is making um, sort of the similar style, but about a different subject, so that I can watch that. And yeah, that's, that's really awesome. So, uh, you know, welcome to the, to the, to the thing, <laughs> Tim. Um, and yeah, I, I wanted to talk about um, this process for me and, and how it has helped me become much better than I was when I started. And so, um, one of the big things that happens when you record yourself programming is that um, you put yourself in a situation where you're constantly forced to verbalize your thoughts. Because if you watch someone programming and they're quiet, it's, you know, <laughs> it's probably not as good as somebody talking through their thought process the whole time. <laughs> so that's what I try to do. And this is very mentally draining, by the way, um, for me at least, because just um, forcing your brain to always verbalize your thoughts instead of just letting them float around in the, in the neurons. Um, it definitely takes more effort, but I think that there's something magical in the brain that happens when you force yourself to verbalize a thought, and then that thought becomes much clearer and crisper and um, stronger. And I think it's like that old saying about um, how you don't fully understand something until you're able to explain it to another person. So um, that's what I'm trying for when I'm making videos. I'm always trying to uh, explain things and um, relay them to another person, even if that person is not physically present. Because going through that exercise over and over and over, um, it strengthens my thought process. and. Um, it's a lot like uh, rubber ducking, I guess, which is the, um, the idea of putting a rubber duck on your uh, desk and then when you're programming or debugging something, then you uh, force yourself to explain the issue to the rubber duck. And um, that's that verbalization thing, right? Uh, and it, it helps you understand the problem better because if a problem is just floating around in your head, then even if it doesn't seem that way, you might not have a good grip on it, even though you think you might. Uh, and I think, for me at least, just starting this process of recording the videos has, it just gives me a reason to be in that mode for a, uh, you know, a large chunk of time um, very regularly, like not every day, but maybe every other day on average maybe a bit more often, I don't know. I don't know how often I make videos anymore. Um, I feel like I do it often. Anyway, um, so that's been really good. And then another thing that's, that's really, really good is the commitment to a task. Because if I'm recording a video about something, and I do like these one take videos where there are no edits, uh, no breaks, no nothings, right? So I know that going in, and when I start recording a video, I know that, all right, we're gonna see this through. And uh, there's no like running away or backing out. Um, and of course, there is, there is an escape hatch. You know, I can just say, well, this is not going anywhere and stop recording. But um, if I've spent 30 minutes uh, working on something and making a video about it, then I'm that much more invested in seeing it through and finishing the job. And that gives me 
um, that gives me this effect of, of um, putting a lot of friction uh, in case I wanted to uh, abandon the thing. Because I'm feeling like, well, you know, I already spent 30 minutes, why don't I just spend another 20 minutes and wrap it up? Uh, instead of like, well, why don't I throw away these 30 minutes of work? So that's something that really helps me. And, and um, <laughs> I, when I watch my videos sometimes, I can see um, in these faces that I make, this very subtle thing that I know that I'm thinking at that moment, like, oh, should I keep going with this? I'm, uh, I'm not sure if I know exactly how to tie these loose ends together. Um, but uh, then I figure, okay, I'll just keep going and, and work it out as I go. And uh, very often it has a very nice result. And I'm completely sure that if I was not recording, um, then I would just abandon the thing and go work on something else. So a lot of nice things comes out of this. Um, and I guess I've touched on this a bit before, but since, since I'm, you know, I'm, I'm always learning about this thing and um, trying to get better at it, so I, I find that it's good to talk about it. And um, it's, it's nice to, to see that uh, someone else is making similar content so that I can observe that and, and try to get like an external perspective on it because it's, it's hard to watch yourself and really learn something from it. Uh, <laughs> But um, anyway, the process of recording, very good. And I think that it's not necessarily something I would recommend for everyone, although I think if you are interested in that sort of thing, uh, you can try it. And you don't have to post your recordings anywhere, but you could just record a screencast of yourself narrating your programming session um, just for your own... Um, little experiment and see see what you think of it because it really it really changed the way I feel when programming and even when I'm not recording now I I don't necessarily say the things out loud but I find that my thought process has crispness to it that was not there before and I think that's because I've built such a strong habit now of well, I know I'm going to have to verbalize this thought, so I might as well, um, you know, pre-construct it in such a way that it would be easier to say or whatever. Um, and <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but it, it is an interesting effect. And I, I, I can't really, I can't really recommend not experiencing the effect. Now, obviously, um, a lot of people are uncomfortable recording themselves. I was very uncomfortable recording myself when I started. Uh, I still am to a degree, but I got so used to it now that I don't think about it anymore. Um, but it is weird to hear your voice and it's weird to um, listen to it back and hear yourself saying these uh, silly things. And it's really strange um, when you have, to, you have to sit there afterwards and listen to yourself being wrong about something. Um, it really makes you appreciate um, listening to someone else being wrong about something and then giving them the space to figure it out for themselves. Um, so th that's actually something that I found, um, I've learned more about in this process. Because um, like sitting and listening to myself reasoning through something has given me um, a bit more respect, I think, for listening to other people reason their way through something. And maybe I should have had that respect before, but <laughs> if this if this has helped me gain it, then I'll take it. Anyways, um, I guess these are my thoughts about this. So I didn't know where I was going with the video, so I just started talking, uh, and this is the end of that. So <laughs> thanks everyone for hanging out with me on the commute, and uh, welcome again, Tim, to the uh, small club of um, YouTube programming video guys and um, I will see you all next time. Bye.